Thanks to their victories on the battlefields, successful dynastic marriages and sheer luck, by 1519 the House of Habsburg acquired so many lands that the patriarch of the family, Emperor Charles V, was the ruling prince of Castile, Aragon, Naples, Burgundy, the Austrian hereditary lands and the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Christian Europe had not seen such a powerful figure since the deaths of Charlemagne and Justinian, and was not to see again until the rise of Napoleon. Nonetheless, as the Emperor found out, with great power came great adversity, and by owning so many kingdoms he found himself surrounded by countless enemies, both within and abroad. The greatest rivals of the Emperor were King Francis I of France and the Sultan Soliman, the Magnificent of the Ottoman Empire. It was Francis I who was the most stubborn rival of Charles during his reign, and the two of them fought each other on and off in the 1520s, the 1530s and the 1540s. Francis took the throne of France in 1515, and his reign began with a brilliant victory at the Battle of Marignano, where Francis defeated the forces of the Swiss Confederacy and captured Milan. The rivalry between Charles and Francis began in 1519, when Francis challenged Charles in the imperial election. Francis offered generous bribes to the electors after Maximilian I died, but even the King of France was unable to match the bribe of Charles's banker Jacob Fugger. The loss of the imperial election was a bitter pill to swallow for Francis, one that he never forgot. Using the rebellion of the towns in Castile, Francis attacked Charles in 1521, a joint franco navarrese force against the Habsburg forces in Navarre while French armies also launched attacks into the Low Countries. Both invasions were beaten back and the war spilled over into Italy. Fighting began in 1521 and a decisive imperial victory at Pizzoccia drove the French out of Lombardy. Henry VIII of England allied with Charles and English forces also descended on northern France in 1523. The Imperials also invaded Provence in 1523 and ravaged the province. Francis led a counterattack in late 1524 and drove the imperialist forces back into Lombardy, but his attack got bogged down at the Siege of Pavia. Charles sent a relief force to relieve the city and the joint imperialist Spanish force destroyed the French at the Battle of Pavia. To make the victory even more decisive, even Francis I was captured during the battle and shipped off to Castile as a prisoner. Charles forced Francis to sign a highly favorable treaty to himself in 1526. However, once he was back in France, France denounced the treaty. Fearing the growth of imperial power, the League of Cognac was founded in May 1526. The League was made up of France, Venice, Genoa, the Papal States, Milan and some other smaller Italian states, and they aimed to force Charles out of Milan. The fighting initially favored the League, and their troops marched as south as Naples. But Francis struggled to finance his war efforts and was abandoned by Genoa in 1528. In the end, he cut his losses in 1529 and made peace with Charles. According to the Treaty of Cambrai, Francis gave up his claims in Italy, Artois and Flanders, paid a huge ransom for Charles to release his two sons and agreed to marry Eleanor, the sister of the Emperor. Peace between Charles and Francis lasted until 1536 when war once again broke out. The conflict erupted thanks to the Duchy of Milan. The Duke had died in 1535. He had left behind no surviving heirs, and the Emperor absorbed the duchy into the Habsburg patrimony. The increase of the Habsburg's power prompted Francis to invade northern Italy again. The French were assisted by the Ottomans during the conflict, but cooperation proved difficult and a stalemate developed. The Emperor and Francis agreed in 1538, according to which the French were hold on to Turin, but the Spanish remained the dominant force in Italy. As usual, it was once again Francis who broke the peace when he attacked Charles in 1542. His timing was no accident, of course, as the Emperor had just suffered a huge defeat at Algiers in 1541. The war was fought on many fronts again, as the French attacked both the Low Countries, Italy and Northern Spain. In 1543, the Emperor was joined by Henry VIII of England and the two rulers invaded Northern France in 1544. Both monarchs raised large armies, but cooperation proved difficult. Neither side had the strength to decisively defeat the other, and as the war cost a fortune for all three monarchs, the conflict ended in a stalemate that maintained the status quo antebellum. The War of 1542-1546 was the last fought between Charles and Francis as the French king died next year. 
Nonetheless, the son of Francis continued his father's policies and turned out to be a deadly adversary for the emperor in the 1550s. In truth, it was Suleiman the Magnificent rather than Francis who was the only ruler who could rival Charles's power on his own. However, thanks to their geographical proximity to each other, it was Francis rather than Suleiman who was the most deadly enemy of the emperor, and the clashes between Charles and Suleiman were a lot less frequent. The two main areas of the Habsburg-Ottoman clashes were Hungary and the Mediterranean. Initially, the Habsburgs and the Ottomans had no shared border, but the situation changed in 1526. Led by Suleiman himself, the Ottomans crushed the Hungarian royal army at the Battle of Mohacs. The childless King Louis II of Hungary died in the battle, and a succession crisis erupted in Hungary and Bohemia. The Bohemians elected Ferdinand, the younger brother of the emperor, as their next king, while the Hungarians elected two monarchs, Ferdinand and Zon Zapolya, the most powerful nobleman of the kingdom. War quickly erupted between the two rival kings, and Suleiman, of course, backed the claim of Zapolya. He invaded Habsburg territory in 1529 and marched his armies all the way to the gates of Vienna, but the early arrival of the winter forced him to lift the siege after just a few weeks. The Ottomans gathered a large army again in 1532. The emperor was unable to help his brother in 1529 as his war against the French had just ended, but the situation was different in 1532. Charles raised a huge army and waited under the walls of Vienna for the Ottomans, but as the Sultan's force got bogged down at the Siege of Kosciak, the Ottomans failed to arrive under the walls of Vienna this time. The mid-1530s saw the two sides disengage in Hungary, as the Sultan turned his attention east and led his armies against Safavid Persia. With no major conflict against France or in Hungary, the Emperor used a respite deal with the Barbary pirates, the North African vassals of the Sultan. Using their bases of Algiers and Tunis, the Barbary Corsairs launched devastating raids against the coasts of Italy and Spain. The Emperor led a force against Tunis in 1535 and captured the pirate's nest. Unlike in his previous conflicts, Charles V led in person his armies and showed considerable bravery during the fighting. With a war against the French erupting in 1536, the Emperor was unable to attack Algiers. The Ottomans allied with the French in 1536 and, with French assistance, devastated the coast of Charles and his allies. The Emperor was only able to concentrate against the Ottomans after peace was re-established with the French in 1538. A large Spanish-Italian fleet was gathered and confronted the Ottomans at Preveza, but bad coordination and adverse winds allowed the outnumbered Ottomans to emerge victorious. The Emperor led an attack against Algiers in 1541, but the expedition ended in disaster. The navy departed from their bases too late, and it was already autumn when they landed in North Africa. Storms destroyed a good chunk of the fleet, and the rest were forced to retire. War against the Ottomans erupted again in Hungary in the 1540s. Zapolya died in 1540 and Ferdinand moved in to seize his lands. Habsburg forces besieged Zapolya's widow and son at Buda, and in desperation they turned to the Sultan. The Sultan came to their rescue, but Suleiman decided that an official partitioning of the kingdom served his interest best. The Ottomans conquered the central parts of the kingdom and allowed Zapolya's son to rule Transylvania as their vassal, while Ferdinand was allowed to keep the western and northern segments of Hungary. Charles once again could only offer limited assistance to his brother, who made peace with the Sultan in 1547 and became the tributary of Suleiman. The war between the Ottomans and the Habsburgs erupted from time to time in the next two decades, but no major transformation of the status quo occurred, and the border settled in the 1540s remained more or less the same until the Great Turkish War of 1683-1699. Besides his many external enemies, the Emperor also faced many internal ones. His rule in Castile got off to a rocky start. When Charles arrived in Castile, he did not speak a word of Castilian, and quickly alienated the locals by naming his Flemish entourage into important positions. The atmosphere inside a country was tense, and exploded in revolt. The revolt of the Comuneros when the Emperor left Castile to take the imperial throne. The revolt of the Comuneros lasted for a year and a half, and initially, Charles's region struggled to defeat the rebels. Luckily for the Emperor, the rebels were mostly coming from the representatives of the cities and towns of Castile, and most of the nobility decided to side with the Emperor's loyalists. Joined by the nobles, the loyalists crushed the rebels, and by the time the Emperor returned to Castile in 1522, the revolt was largely over. 
A similar revolt erupted in Valencia, while Germany was rocked by the Revolt of the Knights in 1522 to 1523 and the Peasants' War of 1524 to 1525. Charles was also unlucky enough to become the Emperor of Germany when the Reformation began to spread. Inspired by the teachings of Erasmus, Charles firmly believed that the Roman Catholic Church needed reform, but he regarded Luther's teachings to have been nothing but heresy. Still, he allowed Luther to defend his teaching before the Diet of Worms, and he also allowed Luther to depart from the Diet with his head on his shoulders. Thanks to his humanist upbringing and the growing Ottoman threat from the South, the Emperor sought to resolve the problem of Christian unity through church reform by pressuring the Pope to hold an ecumenical council that would solve the differences and would reunite Christendom. Nonetheless, it needs to be said he was a lot less tolerant in the Low Countries, where heretics were imprisoned and even burned at the stake. Many years passed until the Council of Trent was held, and by that time the disagreements between the Catholics and Protestants had only grown. The Protestant princes organized themselves into the Schmalkaldic League, refused to attend or recognize the council and began to seize Catholic property inside the empire. The emperor responded in kind. An armed conflict erupted in 1546. The emperor emerged victorious and crushed the league's forces at the Battle of Mulberg in 1547. A temporary peace was restored with the Protestants that lasted until 1552. While the council was in session, the emperor made Innsbruck his seat so he could follow the proceedings, but this choice of location nearly cost him. Allied with the French king, Protestant princes rebelled again. They struck at Innsbruck and nearly captured the emperor who barely escaped. The emperor led his troops in person the next year, but despite raising a large army, he failed to retake Metz from the French. By this time his health was deserting him and he was tormented by gout, forcing him to conduct his last campaign from a litter. Defeat, mounting debts and his failing health demoralized the emperor and he delegated negotiations to his younger brother Ferdinand. Ferdinand was more flexible in his dealings with the Protestants and he negotiated a compromised peace with the Protestants at Augsburg in 1555. The Peace of Augsburg ended the war in the Empire and gave leeway to the princes to either choose Catholicism or Lutheranism as the official religion of their lands. The peace ratified the religious plurality of the Holy Roman Empire, a tragedy from the point of view of the Emperor who was disgusted by it and depressed by his own powerlessness to do anything about the status quo. Demoralized and sick, Charles V decided it was time to renounce power and retire to live out the rest of his life in peace. In the mid-1550s, he gradually abdicated from his positions. Crucially, he decided to split his empire. Already in the 1520s, he gave up his control over the Austrian hereditary lands to his brother Ferdinand and decided to make Ferdinand his successor in the empire. Thus, the prestigious imperial title passed to the Austrian branch of the family. His son Philip inherited the Iberian kingdoms and the growing American empire attached to Castile, Naples, Milan and the Burgundian inheritance, his line becoming the Spanish branch of the family. By the time he got to retire, the Emperor was worn out and had a pretty negative view of his own accomplishments. Historians hold a more nuanced view of him. Although Charles V failed to stop the disintegration of Christendom's unity, the example of previous Emperors like Constantine or Justinian showed clearly that in conflicts of faith, Emperors were often powerless to stop the division of the Church. In terms of his military achievements, the Emperor had a mixed record and his great victories like Pavia or Mulberg were accompanied by reversals like Algiers or the failed siege of Metz. Still, circumstances were often heavily stacked against the emperor. Although he was the ruler of a huge territory, he lived in an age where the modern bureaucratic state was only beginning to form and, as often, the elites of his kingdom enjoyed numerous privileges, most importantly tax exemptions. Despite the impressive list of his titles, the emperor was nowhere near able to utilize as much of the wealth or manpower of his kingdoms as a, say, Napoleon would be able to do a few centuries later. To finance his wars, the emperor was forced to borrow heavily, often at extortionate interest rates, and unfortunately for his kingdoms, he left them heavily in debt. As royal power was quite strong in Castile, Charles was able to tax this kingdom quite heavily and force Castile to shoulder a disproportionately large burden, which unfortunately set the kingdom on a course of a slow but inevitable long-term decline. Nonetheless, things need to be seen in context. Shortly after Charles's abdication, 
His son Philip was forced to declare bankruptcy, but the rival of Philip, Henry II of France, also struggled badly with finances and similarly was forced to declare bankruptcy in 1559. One of the success stories of the Emperor's reign was without a doubt the conquest of the Aztec and Inca empires in America. The conquest in reality had little to do with the Emperor as these invasions were instigated by private individuals who conquered the large American empires with only a handful of men and were assisted by local tribes and the diseases brought by the Europeans. To solidify central authority in the newly conquered lands, the Emperor divided power between viceroys and councils and did his utmost to stop the creation of a powerful land-owning nobility that would have rivaled royal power. Despite the great distances, which made communications between the Americas and Europe very difficult, the Emperor's agents were very successful and set up a relatively well-working bureaucratic machine. Nonetheless, it needs to be said that during the Emperor's reign, the treasure fleets coming back from the Americas were still relatively small in comparison to the wealth that the fleets were able to bring back under the reign of his son. Despite reversals and defeats, it was undoubtedly during the reign of Charles V that the Habsburg dynasty reached its zenith. Under his son and his successors, the Spanish branch still remained the dominant power of Western Europe well into the 17th century, but slowly, their power began to decline, never to reach the same heights their illustrious predecessor did.